a Ranfurly Shield Challenge match for 27 years. And the last time they played here on Lancaster Park for the Ranfurly Shield, they were successful. 1972 by 20 points to 16. And an ironic chair from the Canterbury crowd as Canterbury win the first line out of the match. Remember last week they were beaten by 2-1 to one in the line-out count from Wellington, and that's the big problem. That's what's been on the minds of Cantabrians all week. How are they going to stop Andy Hayden? Graham Thorne. I think they'll have a look for the first five or ten minutes to see how it's going, and then they'll have to pick up some variations if they're not winning. And that's two for Canterbury. It's not the best line-out ball as Deans goes over it. Midway 22 and halfway inside the Auckland half. <laughs> two very big front rows here today with the two Auckland props. They must have come pretty close to All Black selection. And, of course, two All Black props now in the Canterbury front row, and Davey and Ashworth. It's Orwin Harvey that picks the ball up from the speculator on the Auckland 10-metre line. The Auckland back, so they're going to run it early on the piece. A little chip from Stanley. Cunningham has Green. And Collinson on the loose. This is Shelford. And Auckland charging up. This, it's Glenn Rich. Away goes Rich over the 22. Ball brought down just 10 metres short of the line. In go the Auckland forwards. A rampaging start from the Aucklanders. And that's really shaken the Cantabrians. They weren't expecting that. Everyone's been saying that the Auckland backs haven't got it. But uh, John Hart, the Auckland coach, says they have it. And you can see here how well Wayne Shelford took the move on, started by Glenn Rich, just taking it on. He's over the 25. A good move across from Craig Green to stop the move. But it's Auckland's ball. Just five metres short of the Canterbury line. That's a good scrum from the Canterbury pack. That's an early penalty to Auckland. One of those Canterbury forwards attaching himself from the scrum. And here's a chance for Grant Fox. In dead, flat, calm conditions. board after just three and a half minutes of play the deadly accurate boot of Grant Fox a difficult kick from wide out it's 3-0 yesterday when the Auckland team were training the Auckland team lined up and booed Grant Fox when he was taking a few kicks just to get him ready for today's uh, match and the first kick he had he got a couple of boos from the crowd Lindsay Harris the Auckland fullback with his first touch of the match and that has not found touch as Deans setting it up from the back that's not a bad kick either from Robbie Deans as the Auckland forwards can do little but take it into touch inside their own 22 there's the man who only needs four points today to set a new Canterbury record for points in Ranfurly Shield Rugby hookup and the tap from Dad Atkins at the back of the lineup and tidy ball so far from the four lineups we've seen in this match the Auckland forwards try to maul that ball but it's Canterbury ball the first scrum with Canterbury putting the ball in and we'll be watching the three loose forwards from Canterbury Dale Atkins at the back see the way he's packing down there and that familiar sight of Atkins going the short side with Dean. Robbie gets up from fullback. And oh, I think he might have been through there, Deans, but he lost it. He lost it forward as he went to squeeze his way through the gap. This time it's the Auckland scrum on the 22. It's Canterbury again trying to wheel the scrum. And Atkins, I think. The ball has gone loose. The Canterbury forwards led by Don Hayes. 15 metres short of the, winning, of the Auckland goal line. It's there for the Canterbury backs. But Mr. Harrison has awarded a penalty to Canterbury, so it's a chance now for Deans. And the throats of 40,000 people can tell you that Canterbury are back on equal footing after seven minutes of play. Mr. Harrison is going to be watching for everything. Every infringement will be penalised. The ball lost forward. And we'll have the scrum where the ball spilled out of Anderson's arms. Midway 22 and halfway. Five metres in from touch. Bircher 
to Glenn Rich, who's come off the back. But Hayes has him just a few metres outside the 22. Up in centre field. Good position here for the Auckland backs. They can go either way. They've split their back line. And it's Fox going the short side. Wetton there as well. But this is Wayne Shelford charging through the tackles. And again, Mr. Harrison is quick with these penalties. Those Canterbury forwards coming in over the top and killing the ball. And there's another chance for Fox. A little bit of a complaint from the Canterbury crowd here, a little bit of obstruction. Watch Grant Fox, and you see how Lindsay Harris gets in front of Wayne Shelford, and Robbie Deans runs into him. But the referee let play on, and Shelford was tackled there. And the penalty ensued from that uh, maul there. He's on good form today, Grant Fox. He's punished Canterbury for that penalty, and Auckland go back into a three-point lead. We've had ten minutes of play in the first half. Five metres inside the Auckland 22. Cleared quickly this time for Fox. Well, Auckland may be ahead on the scoreboard, but they're a long way behind in the territorial advantage of this match so far. It's been all played down inside the Auckland half. And that's where this line-out is taking place. <laughs> Deans, who somehow or another managed to find a gap through the front of the line-out. And he's been penalised for deliberately uh, putting the ball into touch. Watch on this with British run short side now. Watch in inside the autumn players. It was Greg Burgess that stopped the ball from going to the player it was passed to and put it into touch, and Mr. Harrison gave a penalty for that. With the Rand Furley shield close at hand for Robbie Deans and a reminder of the importance of this kick from 30 metres. sound that his boot made when he kicked that ball and never wavered or deviated went straight between the posts well who would have believed it that after 21 minutes of play in this match with uh, the best line out forward in the in the world on their side Auckland have only able, been able to win one line out and Thorpe and Ashworth doing a lot of good work for Canterbury at the front of the line out with these quick taps but often the ball comes back rather speedily and untidily like it did on that occasion John Ashworth. Seven, and behind five, him, Tony Thorpe. And of course, John Mills, the Canterbury hooker in front of him. That's where Canterbury are winning the ball in their lineouts. This time it's the tap from near the back of the lineout. Victor Simpson, who was the most impressive of the Canterbury backs last week, links up with Dale Atkins. Hobbs is there as well, up to the 22. In go the Canterbury forwards. It's there, but oh, bad luck for Bruce Deans. Warwick Taylor, should I say, kicks for the goal line. It'll be too deep. There was no one at home there when Victor Simpson made the dash, and uh, he, he set up a very good wall, and Canterbury, if they hadn't fouled it up, it would have been very dangerous. Play there from Andy Hayden as he tapped the ball back and set it up for Harris. One gets the feeling that Canterbury almost putting a vice like grip around this Auckland team at the moment. 27 minutes into the first half. Well, Graham Flynn, we've talked a lot about this big territorial advantage that Canterbury's had, but the fact is, of course, they are not putting points on the board. You're correct there, uh, Brennan, but perhaps now they've got themselves a platform for the first try of the game. Again, superbly controlled ball from the line-out as Deans goes to the short side. No support for Deans as Hobbs plays half-back. Smith is going to have a dab on his own. Smith just trying to sneak around the front of the scrum. But just couldn't make his way to the goal line. But this is 